Welcome back everyone to the channel. Uh, if you're in India right now, you're hearing a lot about black fungus. So I thought I would spend some time with you and kind of go over it as to what it is, what causes it, who's at risk, how it's diagnosed, how do you treat it and what the prognosis is, and then more importantly, how you can prevent it. The first thing I'm gonna say is it's an extremely rare form of fungal infection caused by mucor myositis. And that is a group of mold or fungi which are naturally occurring in the soil more than the air and are also associated with uh, animal dung as well as uh, decomposing uh, foliage and whatnot. The, the real question is, when do you see this? And in the US, um, in my practice, we would see it typically uh, in bone marrow transplant patients, stem cell transplant patients, and solid organ patients. But it was very, very rare, one to two in a million patients. All of a sudden in India, we are seeing it in a much higher proportion. The real question is why? And we think it's because this disease, like many of the opportunistic diseases, occurs in patients who are immunosuppressed. And in this case with COVID-19, many of the patients who get hospitalized, which is only about 10% of the total with severe or critical disease, end up requiring prolonged steroids up to 10 days uh, and often have uh, bad diabetes and high sugars. And it's in that setting that the immune system doesn't do its job and the fungus, which is already there potentially in the sinuses and in the lungs, can start to grow. And when that happens, people start to get sick. So what are the symptoms of mucor mycosis? In general, they're fairly nonspecific with a few exceptions. Uh, in the case of the sinuses, patients will present with unilateral facial pain, drainage from their sinuses, or headaches. And in some cases in advanced disease, they'll start to have black discharges from their uh, eyes or from their um, nose. In the case of the lungs, they will have a cough productive of sputum and sometimes with black sputum coming out. In addition to that, um, they can have fevers and other findings. Now there's actually four forms of the infection uh, in the terms of the different symptoms that it can affect. It can affect the sinuses through the rhinocerebral approach. It can affect the pulmonary bed or the lungs. It can affect the skin or cutaneous spread, and it can also be disseminated where it spreads via the bloodstream to everywhere else. So what do you do when you have these symptoms? Typically, it's not going to be in normal patients. It's going to be in the patients who are immunosuppressed, and therefore you're at risk for it in this day and age in India if you've had COVID-19 recently and been treated with steroids, and potentially if you have diabetes, which is about 10 to 15 percent of the population. And the interesting thing is with steroids, they affect the uh, middle metabolism and will potentially uncover diabetes. But the main key is that we need to contain indiscriminate use of steroids in patients and limit them to 10 days and taper them as soon as we can once the patient's saturations improve. The second thing is we shouldn't be using them in cases which aren't severe. And what I mean by that is SATs less than 94%, uh, shortness of breath, or other significant signs or symptoms of severe or critical COVID requiring hospitalization. And finally, we should be using them under uh, great scrutiny. In other words, you need to have someone monitoring both the patient and the steroids uh, and the sugars. Now, what do you do about this if you um, have these symptoms? You go in and you get diagnosed. And the best way to diagnose is, is by taking fluid from the sinuses or the respiratory tract and sending it for uh, gram stain and sputum and, and uh, evaluation with a KOH stain, which should show fungal uh, spores or, or other material. And then further, once it's diagnosed, the treatment consists of very strong antifungals in the way of amphotericin. And in the facial region, the sinuses infection can go to the eyes, it can go to the brain. And in some cases, you have to take the eyeball out, you have to debride the sinuses, and you have to debride, uh, you have to do a craniotomy and open it up. Now, uh, how can you prevent this? And what I would say is that if you have the risk factors for disease, meaning you've recently had steroids or you're immunocompromised for other reasons or, and you have uh, bad diabetes uh, brought on by the steroids or otherwise, um, the key is to rapidly taper your steroids, 
um, go in and get evaluated as soon as you can, get the medications on board, and that's how you improve survival. Um, the, the way to prevent it is to wear the N95 so that you're not exposed to the spores in the air. There is some uh, mention of potentially contaminated circuits for oxygen or for the humidifiers and other things, but that's not been clearly demonstrated in this disease. And so I, I would not, until we see more evidence of that, I wouldn't uh, think about it. Um, as far as statistics go, normally this is present in one in a million cases and in normal patients, um, it can go as high as 77 in 1000 cases in bone marrow transplant or stem cell transplant patients. Um, and in COVID, we don't really know, but so far we've seen about eight to 10,000 cases across India with about 126 deaths. Now, the problem is the Indian government has stated that we need to record these cases as they come because, they're, because it's so rare, we aren't doing that in the world. And so they've actually asked for it to be a reportable measure like other uh, infectious diseases. So we understand when there's uh, sporadic cases occurring all across India. And I think that's important to do. But anyway, um, the, the main thing to take home is that 90% of COVID patients will never be hospitalized or be on steroids. Secondly, if you don't develop huge diabetic complications or other issues, the likelihood of you getting this is low. And then third, if you develop symptoms, uh, uh, which we've mentioned, you need to seek care sooner um, and that way you can be treated with the appropriate medications and or debridement and that should improve outcomes. But even with all of that, um, in some of the series which we reviewed in the literature um, in, in the bone marrow transplant um, registries, the mortality can be as high as 50%. So it is something to think about, but the numbers are very small. Uh, so I wouldn't get alarmed or worked up over this. It's something to consider. But I think the main thing is to be aware of it and know when to seek care. Anyway, I hope this helps. And as always, thank you so much for uh, joining me. And if there's any questions you have, leave them in the comments below. And uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. As always, if you like what we're saying, subscribe, um, hit the bell icon so you can get updates from our channel and share it with all your friends so that we can all kind of be enriched and enlightened and raise our awareness because it, to me, knowledge is power and it's the power to do something together to make a change. So I'll, I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care and uh, over and out. If you like what you're hearing, hit the like button. You wanna share it with all your friends, that would be great. And hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more episodes from this channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can be alerted to the next one that we come up with. Thank you for joining us as always. It's always been a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you again.